Okay, we have Rob Moore in here, a uh, big studio guy, worked for NBC, Fox, all kinds of stuff, sets up studios. Thank you for coming in. Tommy, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate so, it. So how did you get into this? Well, where did you grow up? So I grew up in uh, northeast Pennsylvania, small little coal mining town. Nothing yeah. there. <laughs> Nothing there. So I uh, went left, uh, left town and uh, went to Philadelphia, graduated from Temple University, go Owls. And uh, just had a passion always. I wanted to be a sports broadcaster. Love sports. Wanted to be a sports broadcaster. And um, then I fell in love with the camera work, behind the camera work, and just started there and, and got my degree in broadcast journalism and uh, kind of never looked back after that so point. So what got you so interested in, in the camera? Like what, what got you interested in it? Well, I just saw the bullshit that reporters had to deal with, right? You know, they're, they're getting yelled at. People hate them, you know. You're fake news. You're that. Yeah, you know, yeah, all, yeah. all the stuff we see, and I said, "That's not for me." I, I like, I like, I just fell in love with just the visual and and, and seeing things and, and creating the story because that's the person who creates the story is the guy that sees it. So you like the technical part of sure. it, sure. So then, okay, so then you graduate from college, yep. right? And then what happens after that? So after uh, my last semester of college, um, got the word that the girl I was with was pregnant <laughs> and we were having our first child so 22 year old who just didn't finish college yet having a kid uh got and, you, my, and you're in philly at this time yep okay got my ass in motion uh you know i, I don't know if i'd be where i am today if i didn't have my son that early because it pushed me it yeah. kind of like made you settle down and get things in line get my shit together at yeah. 22 my buddies are out partying and here i am uh figuring out life and uh, yeah, so I got I. It just took me to uh, push myself, and I got a little job at a small little TV station as a one man band. Okay. Reporter and camera guy in one. So you're doing both. So you're reporting on things, and you're setting. Are you setting up the cameras? So basically, you set the camera up, you hit record, you walk around the other side. Hi, I'm here today at blah really? blah blah. Then you shoot your video. Then you interview your people. And then you put it all together. And you're doing all of this? All of it. For and, nothing. And this is for, for an NBC affiliate? This was for a, a smaller uh, little affiliate uh, before I got to NBC. Okay. Uh, so you do the one-man band, and then uh, does NBC affiliate recruit you from there? So basically, yeah, that's exactly what happened. I got a call. Um, I helped out an actual reporter for the NBC station. He didn't have a, he didn't have a, photo, a photojournalist with him. Can I use your help? Can you shoot me some video? So I said, sure. Shot the guy some video, used it. Got a call the next day if I'd be interested in, in a job opening. So I jumped ship from the one-man band and then just strictly got into uh, video, you know, photojournalism. Uh, okay, and, then, and what exactly is that? So when you say photojournalism, so, the, it's the, so NBC affiliate pulls you. Yep. Now you go in to work for them as of – Photo photo journalist photo journalist videographer people videographer call it, cameraman okay the it, guy when you're out when you see the TV station and they have that truck that they put the big mast up on mm -hmm. that was me I'd set the truck up so I'd set up the 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 shot I would do satellite shots so you got the big satellite dishes on the trucks uh, set up doing satellite shots but the guy behind the camera so you know you see the guy with the camera on his shoulder that was me. Okay, so you're setting everything up, and you're the guy with the camera on the shoulder. Yep. So your work day is when you're with NBC, you walk in, boom. The first thing you do, I assume, would be you set everything up. It's quickly. Well, <laughs> you get you get in, and and it would be you know I would help I could help in the studio. So like a studio that we're in now, uh, that could be my job for the beginning of the day. Come in, we're gonna set lights up. We have a big interview coming in, right? So uh, the president's gonna be here. Let's just say. And there were there were times where you had presidential candidates that would come in for interviews and you'd have to set up the lights and you'd have to set up the camera angles and all that type of stuff um, and then mostly after that would be out in the field uh, there was unfortunately there was a murder on 28th street you guys got to head out in philly load up the truck get in the truck interview people like i said talk to people put together a story edit that story within a half an hour you're adding in it too editing so it you're setting it up setting it up filming it reporting it it's a lot of work so Tommy. you're basically a one-man band again kind <laughs> of in a way it's it's a lot of work 
for for no money. Uh, that's the the thing. What was it, an internship? No, I, I got paid. I'm saying, but but it, it was like you dog would think, shit money. You would think, yeah, you would yeah. think you get all this money. You get it's 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 a tough. I give the people out there that work in the journalism and news industry a lot of credit. So what are they? So like when I see somebody on Fox News or mm-hmm. whatever, well, like um, like a Tucker uh, Tucker Carlson mm-hmm. at nighttime or what? Not their books and whatever else. What are they making? I'm, I'm sure he's six figures or more. Oh, he is. He, but he the is. guy filming him isn't making shit. No, I mean they're at a they're at an affiliate. They're there. No, sorry, they're not at the affiliate. They're at the 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 station. They're at Fox. Like right. they work for corporate Fox. Okay, so you got the corporate Fox, but then you have like the local Fox 29 here in Florida. Yep. So now that guy who's sitting behind the desk, he's not getting paid six figures. He's get he? no. I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't know that for a fact, but right. I, I I don't think he's getting the money Tucker Carlson's getting. Yeah, and that's why you see markets. You have markets, right? Uh, market sizes. Philadelphia is a, I think four. I think they're that means they're the fourth largest TV market in the whole United States. Really? What, who's one? New York, I believe, is number one, or it could be California. I could be wrong. It could be LA. Yeah. So those those are the jobs that you want to get to. So you get to them, and then you get to what's called network. That's when you made it. You get to CNN, you get to Fox, yeah. you get to ABC, you've made it. Because I, I'll see, like, the Fox 29 here, and these people are up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I did that, too. And I sit there, and I think, I hope these motherfuckers are getting paid, because 4 a.m., nope. that means they're, they're, they have to be there at, what, 2.30 a.m.? I'll tell you, I did that. Yeah, you did it? Funny yeah, tell I, me. Worked, I worked that shift. What, what was the shift? 3.30 a.m. to noon. So you had to be there at 3.30 a.m. And the worst part about the overnight shift is think about what happens overnight. Only bad things happen at night usually. Fires, murders, shootings, all the bad stuff. That's what you see when you wake up in the morning. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what you see when you wake up. So 3.30 in the morning till noon. And guess what? If there was breaking news... You could be there longer, so you could be put in a shift from three thirty and not get home till three in the afternoon. So when so you see when you see these people come on at four a.m., they're there. They're, they get there, you know. And if, again, the, the anchors, the guys who are, you know, the guy and the girl who are on reading the news to you, they get there a little later. But the reporter that's out in the field, like at the breaking news scene, or the videographer, yeah, they're in a they're in at three o'clock in the morning. Damn. Unless it's an hour drive. If it's an hour drive, there might be in a 2.30 to get to their destination Holy by that 4 shit. o'clock hit. So That's crazy. It's, uh, and then those days. people, for their, do they study the material before they come on, or are they just they're reading off a screen word by word? The people out in the field? I'm talking about like the people behind the desk. People behind the desk, yeah, they'll have scripts basically printed for them already. So okay. they don't really have to – I shouldn't say that. Some of the anchors will write some of the stories, but they have people that write all that stuff for them. So the stuff's already ready. And a good anchor will come in and, and go over the script to make sure they can pronounce the names correctly, the places correctly. Right. Some don't. Some just come in, put their makeup on, tie their tie, get on, and, and hope they, they get through it. They but, get through it. And then when you're done at 12, you almost have to prepare for the next day of what you're going to do at 4 a.m. the next day, right? It could be, yeah. That's, yeah. A, hell of a, that's but, a hell of a job. I don't know how. Phew. But it never works because you prepare for the next day and then some breaking crazy stuff happens overnight and what you had planned totally goes out the window. And how long did you do that shift for? That was all together in media business I was in for 10 years. Okay. Um, but how long were you doing that graveyard shift? The graveyard shift, that was for a good four years I did that for. I, was that while you, your uh, wife now was pregnant? No, she kids she, are already. You kids already have the kids. Yeah, we're already here in South Florida. We've already moved, and you know it was, it worked well. It sounds weird mm-hmm. because I was able to. Kids were at school. She dropped them off at school. I was able to get a workout in after my shift, and I took a nap, and then I picked them up from school. I see. Um, not the most greatest shift in the world yeah but it was it was interesting saw some crazy things over the years crazy stuff yeah you, yeah what'd you say you saw down here kids for so no not here so oh that that was the one in philly when i was up there there was a famous case called kids for cash okay judges sending kids away mm-hmm. to a detention center that their buddy had built so they got a lot of kickback so you'd get caught smoking a cigarette and tommy we're going to send you away. And the parents thought this is a great idea because it's going to show the kid, you know, can't be doing that. And anyway, it became a large case, covered it. 
uh, and actually got put on a Netflix show. I was, Did you really? I didn't get interviewed, but there I am holding the camera as the the verdict came down. Uh, yeah, found the judges guilty. So the kids for cash. So you did that whole thing. So what actually happened with that? So I understand. So the judges were basically locking kids up to get a kickback. They were lot. So yeah, that's exactly what they were doing. They had a friend who built a detention center, and they would. It, it sounded like a great idea, you know. No nonsense, judge. Right? We're not going to tolerate this. Kids need to be shown what's right, and they're going to put away for a little bit until they learn. But it was. In cases where a kid smoked a cigarette, I mean, are you going to throw the kid away in a, in a detention center for six months? I they mean, were putting him away for a cigarette? They were putting him away for crazy stuff. And that case started, the reporter that I used to work with, he was very heavily involved with, with people in the area, and he got a tip that one of the judges was going to be arrested. And I went the day, he called, it was a Saturday, I'll never forget, it's Saturday morning, I need you here, we need you to go, we think he's clearing out his office. I never saw him clearing out his office, but the next day the indictment came down, and the judge was clearing out his office. He was he was clearing stuff out of because he office. knew it was coming down. It was coming, and so then they they you know indicted these guys, Judge uh, Shivarella, Mark Shivarella, and Michael Conahan, and and how how many kids did that, had they put away for basically bullshit? A lot, a lot. Kids killed themselves over it. Wow. Um, there was a mom. I'll never forget this. The day they were found guilty, they came out with their uh, lawyers and, you know, of course said they were disappointed in the verdict, you know, da-da-da-da-da. And the mom, it was the most emotional scene I've ever seen. The judge was standing right there. One of the mothers of the kids who killed himself screamed, and it was all on camera, and he just looked over her and she said, my son is dead because of you. Wow. And it was just that you're just even as a guy behind the camera, your heart's just like whoa. And you and you that have was, children at this time. Yeah, yeah. So it was. And and when you reported on that, that was Philadelphia NBC affiliate at that time. That was Wilkesbury. That's what Wilkesbury. It was Wilkesbury yeah. NBC. Yep. Yep. Wow. Yeah, it was crazy and then, stuff, man. But I mean, how many kids did he do that to? A lot. I don't know the exact it, number. It was. It was a ton. It was. Like, it made a lot of money over the years. How much he, time did he get? I think he's he's got thirty plus years. Good. He'll never see. I mean, he's older, so yeah. he'll never see the light of day. Dirty motherfucker. The other judge got sixteen, mm -hmm. and I think he's out. That's sick that he's out. I think so. I think he's out. But yeah. Yeah, you get ten years for some dumbass shit. They do this to kids, ruin families, ruin and the kids that did get let out after that. They're they're never going to be the same. No. Yeah, you know, they'll be fucked up for the rest of their life. That's a, it's thing. a shame. Don't don't. Wow, they're going to need a lot of therapy. A lot. A lot. So then you move down here. Move down here. You're working down here doing that. And then you go into your own private, basically, So, so yeah, business. so what I did was I, you know, do a lot of work with social media now. Um, and then I, you know, do setups for, for different shoots, you know, like this, this a studio setup or. Yeah, I mean, um, you set this up pretty much. For, you know, I just got the material. You made it work. Editing. So I'll do a lot of, uh, you know, businesses if, if they're looking for, you know, you see ads. You, you see social media, Instagram, yeah. Facebook. Short, quick little ads with, with a lot of uh, wordage and stuff like that. So I'll do that. Um, you know, it's just... Final just, Cut, you do post. post You're really production. good at that. Yep. Yeah, so I, I've seen all that work. So that's just, you know, it's it's uh, it's not the news. There's certain things I miss about the news, yeah. but I don't miss the 3.30 wake-ups. I don't miss, you know, seeing the terrible things that I saw over the years. I saw some terrible, terrible things over the years. And Great. So do you have a number or a website or any to give out in case somebody in Florida wants a yeah, studio so, set up? Yeah, hey, I mean, why not? I mean, if, so, shit. if somebody's watching, I mean, uh, you can give, give me a call anytime. It's 561-801-6621. Okay, uh, so it's 561-801-6621. And I'll put that in the description for you. Rob. Rob Moore. The professional uh, Rob Moore. The professional <laughs> Rob Moore. I, I, you know, I, I call him studio. I call him Rob studio guy. I, <laughs> I, I think of myself as a good guy. I'm not going to screw anybody over. It's yeah, just, it's not in my it's not in my background. Yeah. It's you know so. Yeah, like I said, I mean, you helped me with all this stuff. Yep. You know, I pretty much was trying to go with the Rogan look, and you've come back, and you've been very kind and easy to work with, and yeah. not you know drain my pockets like yeah, no, man, like no. everything else. I mean, e very easy, you know. And it's 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 that's what I like. You know, it's just people or you know I, I'm a people person and it's just helping people out because it, it comes back to you things come back to you in life yeah whether you believe it now or not there's things that come back to you in life you help somebody out 
somebody helps you out here it's just that's just how i was raised it's just me but yeah no you're good you're good at what you do and you take your time and you perfect it and and you mention things that you see and if the person doesn't really like it i mean you've worked with me you gave your opinion and if i say no rob but you know i do like it like this you're not like oh what well, it has to be like yeah. this. you just throw that, your opinion out there and that's a hard thing i think sometimes for people in that profession is it, it's an art too it is an art and when you talk to an artist or somebody who's an artist, it's, it's they see things their way, and sometimes it's hard to see things another way. But it's you know, hey, you got to you got to work with people. You know, I'm still going to tell you, Tommy. You know, I don't I don't like that. Maybe maybe this, and you say, you know what, I, I really like it. So at the end of the day, it's your product. I'm still going to help you try to try to get there. Um, you know, little things I notice. Yeah. Maybe minute things, but it just aggravates me. And the, the typical person home is going to have no idea. But they it's have, just your experience no doing 10 years in yep. uh, Phillies, NBC, Fox, everything else. You've just seen all of it. So yep. in that and that atmosphere, it's got to be right. Yeah. yeah. And I messed up enough in my early yeah. years. I mean, there are times that, man, you know, you, you, you mic up a person with a mic and have the wire hanging out. And it may seem nobody's really going to notice it right at home. Are you really going to say, oh, my God, his microphone's sticking out? No. But the boss saw it, and the boss is like, what the hell was that? So yeah. You, you learn. You learn. Yeah, and when you do that for 10 years, then you're looking at everything particular because you you're in that business. Yeah, you do. So we'll put your number in the description. Appreciate and it. 561-802-801-6621. I already fucked that up. 561-801-6621. Yep. Rob Moore, and he's very good. I highly recommend him. Appreciate it, Tommy. So thanks for coming in thanks and telling us me. about the uh, Kids for Cash. I know yeah. people, I'm, they're going to be real interested in that. That's a that's a good one. I think that's yeah. one where we maybe hopefully can get a get an interview there, too, to, to go through that. Because I, yeah. I have some people that maybe still can get through to them. But it's yeah. Like, yeah, crazy, crazy. If, they, if people haven't seen it, check it out. Kids for Cash I said they demanded Netflix uh, documentary about it, so it's very interesting. Wow. All right, Rob. Well, thanks for coming thanks, in. Thanks, Tommy. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Appreciate it.